there were some new guys that moved in the house that were very aggressive. They were a little flashy. It was kind of weird because they didn't look like they should be in the boarding house, but yet they were. They had leather, they had nice chains and stuff, and there was four of them that moved in all at the same time and they knew each other. And then they started recruiting people because these guys were drug dealers. And they pretty much got everyone in the house except for me because I have a philosophical issue with drugs. If people were not addicted to your product, they wouldn't buy it. It's not like they got they got to have it because they're addicted to it. If it wasn't for this addiction thing, it wouldn't be rolling. But these guys, they were like, we're going to make all this money. So essentially, they had seven guys from the house who were involved in them, involved with their shenanigans of selling drugs. Now, the guys in the house were to sell the people in the neighborhood because typically if you don't know drugs are a very weird business because typically if they don't know you they won't sell to you so this is why they wanted to get the guys who lived in the house who were known by the neighborhood well i remember talking to a street level drug dealer early on when i got into the boarding house because he used to be hanging out, we'd talk and everything, and he was a drug dealer, but he was poor. He really did not make a lot of money. So this was one of the things that held me back, plus I was scared. I mean, the thing is, you deal with drugs, the likelihood of you going to jail is very high. The likelihood of you being in and out of jail is very high, and the likelihood of violence and other bad things happening to you is high. So I actually did not participate and everyone else in the house did. Uh, one of the things with boarding houses is that there's churn. You could literally be in that house for a few months and literally have all brand new neighbors or roommates, so to speak. And this was a situation where we, we had a whole bunch of new people come in old people left out some people had moved to other anthony's prop uh, properties anthony had but they were just talking that stuff and they used to sit in the common area with their drugs like this is what we're gonna do we had a good day today they used to have boardroom meetings about selling drugs like all right well essentially what you need to do is this and this and this to increase your sales so they were out there every day selling drugs and the guys who had jobs, some of the guys quit their jobs to sell the drugs full time because it is, if you're a street level dealer, it's just about waiting until someone shows up. And from someone with a retail background, that can be brutal. You know, sometimes they come like that. Other times you wait around hours for one person to show up. So this is the stuff they were doing and then they were getting really rowdy and loud about it. And they used to have these parties at night and it was just a really crazy look. But once again, I just stayed apart from them. And over a period of time, all these guys either got caught up and went to jail. And there was two guys who were just killed. And then the house was kind of because as they were leaving, new people were coming into the house who they didn't extend the offer to. And it, essentially, it got down to where only one of them was left. One of the four who came in there, because the other three, they were in jail. And if you don't know anything about drugs, there's the street level drug dealer, there's the wholesale drug dealer, and this is the one who, like, um, sells to the people who are between the street level and this guy. Essentially, they, they provide the supply. They're like the supply chain. And then there's the wholesaler. And this guy was kind of like the wholesaler because he had the connections and he never shared his connections with anyone. 
So he essentially had the supply of drugs. We were in the meeting room and uh, he was talking to me. He's like, you know, how did you know? And I was like, well, how did I know what? He said, how did you know this was going to go bad? Because, you know, I've been selling drugs for years and this is the first time that I've had this type of situation happen. It's like, you know, almost from day one, you know, people were getting picked up. People were having problems. How did you know? And, you know, essentially he was trying to figure out if I was a snitch. And I just like, look, I don't mess with your business, but I don't talk about your business. You know, I don't know a lot about your business and I tend to keep it that way. And I just walked out the room because it's a very paranoid, very suspicion based business. And uh, essentially I didn't mess with him. And about a few weeks after that, he moved out of the house because he had moved in with a chick of the neighborhood which was interesting because I saw him around and stuff and they started selling drugs out of that house and he started building up another little crew and it, it, it was just crazy. But if it wasn't for my cowardness of me being scared of jail, I could have very easily got up because they weren't making killer money but they were making better money than I was they were making because you know I think they were making like you know 800 900 bucks a week I was making 200 bucks a week so even though they were doing this illicit thing and then you know you got to look at the opportunity cost the opportunity cost of selling drugs so you get 800 900 bucks a week your risk factor is insane you could make that eight, nine hundred a week and go get popped and go to jail for six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve years. That ain't worth it to me. If I'm going to go to jail, it's going to be like he stole millions. I would probably, you know, uh, I would have been up on some white collar crime, not selling drugs, because essentially you can get just as much, if not more money. And if you get caught, you do little or no time. That's how I looked at it because I was like, if I'm going to do something illicit or illegal, I'm going to be a white collar criminal. I'm not going to be doing this. And I remember that they used to talk about me. That was like, you know, Cam don't have no heart. Cam ain't for this, blah, 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 blah. And one of the bad things that happened is... I believe one of them's little girlfriend, because I believe she was the snitch, because he was one of the first ones to go, and then they just started all popping like dominoes. And then the two that died, I really don't know what happened with that. I just heard that they got shot, and they were talking about them one night, and they were talking about retribution and some other stuff. Because they had a little full-fledged crew. I mean, they had a little operation because, you know, the dude who was the, the, the connect who actually brought the drugs in, he actually never really got caught, to my knowledge. He avoided jail. He avoided because, essentially, he brought the drugs in and he was like, here, 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 here. You sell, but he wasn't out on the street selling. I think that's the most risky part of the drug dealing business is those street level drug dealers. Because all of these guys who were in the house, they were street level drug dealers. They were selling to people in the neighborhood. They were trying to expand the territory because, you know, once you have your repeat users, then you got to, you know, you want new customers if you want to make more money. And they were in the process of expanding because they were trying to go over to high tower because high tower, where we were, all that stuff was the hood. I mean, it was the hood hood. You could see all kind of crazy stuff. Like, I remember one day, one of the local crackheads was walking down the street butt naked. And th this is the thing about the hood. It destroys any innocence you have because you, you'll have little kids seeing stuff that people 
that soldiers, you have little kids seeing stuff like soldiers that went to Iraq, Afghanistan. They'll be seeing these kinds of stuff, it's like the crackhead. She was walking down the street and she was like, hey, how you doing? Lick my nipples and stuff like this. And it was just crazy. And I was just sitting there like, and I'm talking to her because she's butt naked. And I was like, why are you walking on the street naked? She said, I'm hot. I'm hot. Cool me off. Pour some water on me, baby. And she did a little shimmy dance and stuff like the stuff you see in the hood, man, it, it, it's just, it can destroy any hope you have for mankind because you see the lowest basic levels of life forms in the hood. And a lot of this is brought out by drugs. And this is one of the reasons that I'm not a proponent of selling drugs or consuming drugs, even weed, because um, they were selling crack. And all of the weed connects around the neighborhood, they were a different breed of animal. They were a little squirrely. But, yeah, man, I, I couldn't do that. I just couldn't do it. In the end, I'm glad I didn't do it because more than likely I would be either dead or in jail. Not the best options. Nah. You know, the, the hood is this ecosystem of craziness because I remember one night they were all gone. They were all posted selling, doing whatever it was doing. And then we get this big knock on the door. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, answer the door. And there's these dudes looking for Jafar. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, where's Jafar? Uh, he ain't here. When are you coming back? I don't know. I'm not his personal keeper. Because one of the things about the hood is everybody becomes very sarcastic. Everyone has this flippant mouth because that's just the way it was. You know, you couldn't be like a very nice, mannerly dude and make it in the hood. No. And I was like, I ain't his gatekeeper. And I just shut the door. And they stayed on the porch talking about some stuff for about 30 minutes. And then they left. One thing about the hood is there's always something going on. There ain't no peace in the hood. There's always something happening. Someone was shot. The police will raft in. There, there's always something. So my advice to you is don't live in the hood. And if you live in the hood and if you're a parent, get your children out of that situation. Because the legacy that you will leave them by living in that hood is not a good one. I know you love them, but you can't be with them all the time. And I guarantee you, there will be hood elements that will be introduced to these kids that if they didn't live there, they would never know about this. Like where I live, these kids know nothing about their st this stuff. They're, they're innocent. They act like innocent little kids. And I feel that all kids should act like this because you got these kids in the hood who are like seasoned vets. They've seen everything. They've seen, some of these kids have seen people murdered. Some of these kids have seen all types of crazy drug deals go down. And they're nothing innocent, but, you know, as for me, I was a 32-year-old man. And I went through some changes living there because of all the stuff I, I would see, like the naked crackhead, the crackhead walking down the street just shooting, she got a gun, just shooting into the ground, uh, the drugs, the, the prostitution trade, just so many things that I never was exposed to living in Marietta. Didn't even know this stuff existed. Kind of heard about it, but didn't know it existed. And hood ain't just, ain't nothing good, man. It just ain't. So if you want to avoid the hood, I've got some stuff below for you. Be sure to check it out, some courses. Start off with the basic money management course, then get maybe 30 days to 2,500. And if you're really, really too ready to enhance your thing, get the art of holding. That's going to teach you how to set up your legal structure, which will help you with your business. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.